job environment, being trained as a new manager, um, to have to lead persons of different personalities. And so Sister Anjanette, it's not always an easy task, but I will still say yes to it no matter what. It's just not easy. And so I ask when you hear the title, you'll know what I mean. I, there's some things I just need God to help me put a lock on it. Because sometimes the enemy just messes with your thoughts in your mind. Even on a Sunday morning right before you stand up to proclaim his word. But the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Messing with my iPad this morning. Can't pull stuff up. I tell you. He's just mad. That's all. He's just mad. He can actually. But he can be mad all he want. Because we still going to praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We still want to praise the Lord. Amen. I ask that everybody stand for the reading of God's word. I ask everybody to stand for the reading of God's word. Found in 2 Corinthians. Starting with... 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we're going to start at verse number 1. And I'm going to read the New King James Version. Every once in a while, I like to pull out a different version. I'm going to read the New King James Version of this text. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Word of God says, Now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent, I'm bold toward you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought, this is our focus right here, bringing every thought, this is the thing that gives us power, bringing every thought, this is the thing we need to stand on, bringing every thought, this is the thing that gives us ammunition, bringing every thought, this is the thing that helps us to push forward, when we bring every thought into captivity, to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Ah. It says, casting down in verse 5, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And I love that piece. That's our focus. 
bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. For the time we are together this morning, I want to preach from these words, you are now under arrest. You are now under arrest. You may be seated. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence. Now, God, move how you want. Speak how you want. Do what you want, for this is your house and we are your people. And God, when it's all said and done, may the body of Christ be edified and may you alone be glorified. It's in Jesus' name that every believer shout amen. amen. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, you are now under arrest. One of the problems that Apostle Paul had to deal with in our text, Brother Jerome, is that he had to deal with, in the church of Corinth, they were exalting the flesh and they were exalting the world. Uh, Mother Lemon, during this time of uh, Paul's journey, uh, when he would go to the church of Corinth, they were all about lights, camera, and action. It was the glitz and the glam that drew them in. It was the screaming out loud that drew them in. It was the long prayers, a person using all of these words that rhyme, making them sound so important, that drew them in. It was all of these things. And Paul is saying, don't display this elevated type of worship. He says that that's not what the thing that attracts God, but what attracts God is your humble prayer. What, what attracts God is your quiet time. What, what attracts God is your one-on-one -on -one devotion. And he's saying, don't get caught up in the hype. There's nothing wrong with getting excited every now and then. There's nothing wrong with speaking in tongues when you truly hear from the Holy Spirit every now and then. There's nothing wrong with it. But Pop Williams, don't get caught up in the theatrics. It missed the theology. Yeah, amen. And don't, 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 get, don't get caught up in the hype. And miss the presence when he moves. And so he's saying, I, 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 that's why he opens up the way he does. He says that uh, some say that when I'm in front of you, I'm meek, I'm gentle, I'm humble. But then when I'm away from you, I'm bold when I write my letters. And he's saying, I'm being bold because when I go away, I'm hearing the stories of what's being foretold. I'm hearing about how you're acting. I'm hearing about what's going on. I'm hearing about how you all are treating one another. And so now I'm telling you, that should not be the focal point. He says, I, I want you to focus on something a little bit deeper. I, as a matter of fact, when those things happen, he says in our focus uh, text, he says, I need you to take your thoughts into captivity. He says, I, I, I need you. In other words, I need you to put it under arrest. Church, uh, uh, you know, uh, I've shared it with you more than one time. Uh, you know that I love sci-fi movies. You, you guys know that. Brother Jerome, Brother Brandon, you know I, I've spoken before. I love Star Wars. Uh, Sister Anjanette, I love Lord of the Rings. I, I love sci-fi movies. But every now and then, I also like to watch a little mystery. Uh, every now and then, I also like a little intrigue. Uh, in fact, before CSI and before Law and Order and before Murder, She Wrote. I know anybody that used to watch Murder, She Wrote. Amen, amen. Okay, old school TV. Before Matlock. Any Matlock fans? Amen. Be before all of those, there was a series that came out, Deacon David, back in the 1970s about a detective who used to solve cases in a very unique way. Uh-huh, Mother Lemon, uh, th 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 this detective was so unique uh, that he was a regular average blue collar kind of detective. And yet all of his cases dealt with high profile people. Uh -huh. De Deacon Ashley, uh, these suspects were often uh, revered as someone of high society. Uh, Deacon uh, uh, Kim, someone of prestige position and someone who had lots of money. And yet this low blue collar type of detective always remained calm. He always remained cool and collected. Uh, he had the type of personality where he never fussed. He, he never showed hostility. He never came across 
as strong or aggressive. Um, some of you may have heard of him and some of you may have even watched him. But for those of you who may have never heard his name before, I'm referring to the one and only Columbo. Uh, uh, Columbo, Columbo. Uh, there, yeah, there you go. Go ahead and wave, my beloved. She's like, that's my show right there. Yeah. Uh, Columbo, he was this, this awkward kind of detective, this lonely kind of detective, this blue collar detective. And here's what made him so unique, uh, church, as the suspects tried to cover up their tracks and appear dismissive. Um, and when they first met Columbo, uh, he had a witty way of continuing to antagonize them to the point that they would self-incriminate their own self. Uh, he, 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 he would just wait and keep plugging and keep plugging and keep plugging court until eventually they just told on their own self. And when they did, that's when he had the cops come in and they look and say, what's going on? And just like Matlock, just like Murder, She Wrote, just like CSI and Law and Order, they too would hear the famous words, you are now under arrest. Uh, how, 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 how is that uh, connected to our text? Because the Apostle Paul is trying to tell us here that we need to arrest some things. Uh, we need to arrest some things, and here it is, not physical arrest, but mental. Uh, not, not physical arrest, but emotional. Uh, some of us, we've gone through life so long that we make decisions off of our emotions. Uh, we make decisions based on how we feel in the moment. Um, I don't want to, so I'm not going to. I don't feel like it, so I'm not going to make it happen. I don't think it's for me, so I'm not going to try. We make decisions, a uh, temporary decision or a temporary emotion. And he is saying that type of thinking will kill your dreams and destroy your destiny. But you got to take that type of thinking and put it into captivity. Well, how do I do that, Pastor? Because oftentimes I don't want to think like that. Oftentimes I don't want to be like that. I'm tired of being negative. I'm tired of putting my own self down. I'm tired of thinking less than who I am. God, help me to put that under captivity. Well, I'm glad you asked. Because Paul says in verse number three that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. In other words, the first way that you put things under captivity is you got to understand this is not your fight. Uh, this is not your fight. We've heard it said more than once, Brother Brandon, that the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. We speak it, Sister Anjanette. We believe it, Pop Williams. We rehearse it, Brother Hightower. But when do we find the confidence to walk in it? Uh, when do we find the confidence? Because the truth be told, if somebody catches you on, a, on the wrong day and says the wrong thing, they may get the other side of your twin. Hello in here. They may in the name of Jesus, but they just may get blessed with a few choice words. But he's saying those type of things are hard in captivity. Yes. He says this fight is not flesh. You're not waging war of the flesh. You all have heard me mention before about a book called Battlefield of the Mind. It's a book by Joyce Myers. Where she talks about how the mind is where all of our fights happen. Not many of us have been in a lot of physical fights. Unless you just grew up a bully and you always picked a fight. <laughs> but not many of us have been in a lot of physical fights. And bully. Right there. Y'all think, y'all see the little church man around, but bad when he was little. No. <laughs> His mama tell you. If you're the oldest, you may have been in some fights to protect the youngest. And that's crazy because you all have heard me say more than one time, I will run. So, I, hey, I ain't trying to fight. But what was crazy is that I did what I had to do to protect my sibling. Because instinct kicks in. Protection instinct kicks in. But now, just for me, I'm like, I'm to protect my brother who now can protect me because he's bigger than I am. The instinct was that big. But he's saying, don't, that's not your fight. Too often, y'all heard me say last week with Jonah, too often we get caught up in somebody else's storm. Yes. Too often we get caught up in somebody else's mess. Too often we get caught up in somebody else's fight. 
He's saying, though we walk in the flesh, do not war according to the flesh. And here he says it right here. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God. For the what? Pulling down. <laughs> I, I love that. For pulling down. How do I get these thoughts under arrest? You got to pull them down. Just as quick as they enter your head. I pull 
pull it down. I pull down the lie of the enemy. I pull down the trick of the trickster. I pull down my haters and naysayers. I pull down every time they try to throw me under the bus. I pull down for every knife in my back. I pull down for every liar who gossip about me. I pull down for those I helped and now they walked away. I pull down for every member of my family I've lost and they tried to say something negative about them. I, I pull down. I pull it down in the name of Jesus. I pull it down in the name of the Father. I pull it down in the name of the Son. I pull it down in the name of the Holy Ghost. I pull it down and then I cast it away. Because just like the good Lord himself, when we ask for forgiveness, he cast it into the sea yes. and remembers our sins no more. Amen. And so, God, give me the strength to do as you do yes, God. and pull it down. But then the last thing he says here, he says, bring every thought into captivity to the obedience. Somebody say obedience. Obedience. Uh, Courtney, he, he doesn't just say bring it into captivity. But he says bring it into captivity into the obedience of Christ. Uh, what's the difference, Mother Lemon? What's the difference? Well, I can bring something into captivity, but that doesn't mean that just because it's captive is now obedient. Uh, Pop Williams, uh, I can bring something into captivity and then tomorrow go back out and do the same thing. I can bring something to captivity today because of how it made me feel today. I can bring something to captivity today because of how the situation ended up panning out. But if I don't bring it into the obedience of Christ, then I have not yet won. Yeah, amen. Uh, that we have to understand there are some cycles we keep repeating because we have not put it under the obedience of Christ. Uh, but when we feel like we won that day, like, oh, yeah, I feel good, I feel good. That's a great thing. But then two days later, when you're back into, oh, man, I can't believe this has happened to me. It's because we haven't put it under the obedience of Christ. What does it mean to put something under the obedience of Christ? Does it mean that I have to come to church every Sunday? Does it mean that I got to, you talked about earlier about tithes and offerings. Does it mean, what does it mean? Does it mean I got to read my word three times a day, five times a day? What, what does it mean? It means to put it under obedience of Christ means, God, I can't do nothing with it, so I give it to you. Yeah. God, this is not for me to handle, so I give it to you. Yeah. God, I don't understand what this is, so I give it to you. It's trusting God with your mess. Yeah. That's what the obedience of Christ is. God, I trust you with my mess. I trust you with my issues. I trust you with my faults. I trust you with my disobedience. I trust you with my frailties. God, I trust you. I give it to you, God. God, I don't want it no more. You can't help under the obedience of you. God put it under arrest. Because guess what? You stole the keys back from the enemy. Uh-huh. On the third on Thursday, you had your last supper with the disciples. On Friday, they crucified you. But on Saturday, you went to hell and you beat the enemy up and you stole back what he took from you and God. And on the third day, Sunday morning, somebody say Sunday morning.
something into custody. Come here, Deacon David. To be under arrest, it requires you to take that person under custody. So if I don't take it, if I just tell you you under arrest, are you gonna stay or are you gonna leave? <laughs> he gonna roll out. And I'm like, do you hear me? Come back. You under arrest. Go in there. Are you gonna go or are you gonna leave? You gonna see your lawyer. <laughs> you can't just speak it. But to be under arrest, it says it requires you to take the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It requires you to put them on lockdown. What are you saying, brother Love? And what I'm saying is that you can't just tell the negative thoughts you're under arrest. But you gotta take it to the throne of God. You gotta take it into prayer. You gotta take it to the Lord's feet. You gotta take it to Him. And that's how you know it's under arrest. Because God, I'm taking it to you right now. I deliver it over to you right now. You tell your thoughts. Thoughts, you got the right to remain Silence. You shall not speak another word in my mind. If I say anything, and if you say anything against me, my attorney will hold it against you in the court of law where God is my judge. You are under arrest. And when you take it to God, it says again, under arrest requires you to take them and then here's the other part of the definition in order to prosecute or interrogate God. yeah 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 you, you're not just taking them but you take them in order to prosecute or interrogate uh, and who's the one that does it? The judge. Who is judge? God the Father. Who is your attorney? Jesus. Who is the bear's bondsman? The Holy Spirit. Uh, they all work together, and guess what? They all on my team. And so when I take my thoughts under arrest and I tell them that you have to go to court and I present them to the judge, that's when God looks at it and he starts prosecuting and interrogating. He says, why are you messing with my child? And that's when your thoughts stand and say, your honor. Well, that's because I was there when they messed up. I was there when they were out in the street. I was there when they were doing everything but calling on your name. I was there when they were living wrong. I was there when they were acting foul. I was there when they did all of this. And then that's when your attorney will step up and say, but your honor, I interject. They were there in the beginning, but they weren't there at the end. They left the scene of crime, the crime scene too soon. If they would have stayed alone, they would have saw that after they did wrong, they fell on their knees and said, God, forgive me. That after they went there, they called up to the Lord, Lord, help me. After they went through this process, they said, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. And then that's when God says, well, then it looks like your thoughts are under arrest. Then he turns to the bondsman and says, go ahead and lock those thoughts up. Those thoughts will never hurt you again. Those thoughts will never bother you again. Under arrest. Yes, Lord. I, I need you to get that. They are under arrest. What is it to be under arrest? It means I am now free yes. from the last tricks of the enemy. And you heard Deacon David mention it in Bible study. Not just the lies and tricks of the enemy, but the lies and tricks I tried to tell my own self. You need to, I need everybody to put your hand on your head where your thoughts come from. And I need you just to declare every negative thought, you're under arrest. Every negative thought, you're under arrest. And here's the great part. Not only is your negative thought under arrest, but God says they're not approved to make bail. They're under arrest for a life sentence. No more will those thoughts continue to haunt you. 
Today is your freedom day. Today is your release day. You've been haunted by those things long enough. Today, you got your joy back. Today, you get your smile back. Today, you get your pep back. Today, you get a fresh start. You are under arrest. God, this thing been bothering me for the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. God says today, put it under arrest. Give it to the bail's bondsman. And let him lock it up and throw away the key. God is trying to take some of you higher. But first, there's some things you need to arrest. Too often, we talk ourselves out of our own blessings. Put it under arrest. Don't look at what you think you can't do. Start looking at the options you have that you can do. God, I can't go where everybody else go. So don't go where they go. Go where you can go. God, I can't do like everybody else do. Then don't do what they do. Do what I called you to do. be better I just don't think I can you probably feel like you can't but with me all things are possible God I, I'm not sure I, I don't know tell those thoughts you are under arrest no more chains holding me I'm free Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I am free. I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Any free people, I need you to stand on your feet and declare because it's under arrest, I am now free. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Y'all don't sound like you happy to be free today, but I'm free today. I'm free from the enemy trying to keep me down. I'm free from my own thoughts. I'm free from the negativity. Praise the Lord. I am free from what haters say 
coming towards me. I am free. I am free. I am free. I am free. Come on, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. person who has something that they've been fighting to get free from to raise your hand. Close your eyes on. Nobody needs to see your hand raised. If there's something you've been fighting to get free from, it could be a thought, 
It can be a situation. It can even be a person. Amen. Put your hand down. I need every person who had their hand raised. I need you to bring that thing into the forefront of your mind. Right now. I need you to push it right there in the front. And I need you to be transparent with God. That even if the freedom is from my own self. God, I'm tired of sabotaging my own self. I'm tired of trying to talk my own logic. When it's not about my own intellect. It's not about my own logic. But God, it's about your will be done in my life. It's about you trying to make me better. And if I want to experience this full freedom, then God, I need to give it all to you. And with those things that's in the forefront of your mind right now, I need you to take every authority in you. Don't be timid. Don't be shy. Don't whisper it. They can't see you on the camera, but I need the people to hear your declaration right now. And I need you to declare with all authority so the demons in hell can get scared and the angels in heaven can rejoice. And I need you to declare to every negative thought, to every lying tongue, to every demonic force, I need you to declare.